The same way you raised them. Not exactly. Not exactly. That's church ease for not a chance. I know what that's like. My daughter thinks she invented parenting. All right? Now, so it doesn't seem to upset you? Or it does a little bit? Man, you're, God love you. It upsets me. Upsets me. Like, I don't know where all this concern for their well-being came from. It didn't come from me. So let me tell you a little bit about one thing my daughter does. She goes out, she gets an alarm. She gets them on the windows, gets them on the doors. So if the doors or windows, if the toddler, whatever, opens up the doors or windows, then there's this alarm that goes off that lets them know, hey, the child might be missing. And I just don't know why they can't do it like we did back in the day. I don't know why they can't find out their kids are miss missing the same way we did. On the back of a milk carton box. <laughs> he lost one on the milk carton box. Imagine with me if you will. Imagine with me if you will. Honey, when's the last time you seen David Jr.? You might want to go upstairs and check on him. We're out of Frosted Flakes. Speaking of sugar and Frosted Flakes, I'm trying to get in shape. So I started to go to the gym. And first of all, I can't speak about the ladies' locker room, but we got something to address in the men's locker room. Men, the towel is not optional. Yes. <laughs> Can we put the pandemic on hold for a second and make sure all the men in the world understand that towel is not optional in the men's locker room? Next, there's three kinds of people that go to the gym. There's the mirror lookers. A lot of mirror looking going on at the gym. Number two, the smallest amount of people at the gym, that's those who are there to work out. And three, the talkers. The most annoying kind. Unfortunately, I discovered that I was a talker. <laughs> when the guy looked at me and said, Sir, will you get out of my shower? <laughs> I had a towel. I had a I'm keeping this beer. I'm still my punchlines. That was all good. That's all good. In addition to uh, working on my physical health, I, uh, I'm working on my mental health as well. So I went out, I got a therapist. And uh, that's not the punchline. I really did. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I'm speaking in front of millennials and Gen Z, they stand up and cheer that. Yes. I'm not kidding. They really do. And uh, so I go out and get a therapist. And uh, hey, listen, I'm not hating on the millennials. You know what? And here's the problem that people say have with the millennials. They said, we got a few millennials that are probably coming from this table. All right, we got, I'm with you now. Like, people used to criticize them because apparently they've received participation trophies the whole life. Everybody's like, participation trophies, participation trophies. But here's the thing. Millennials are starting to get old enough where they have responsibility with with like, they own businesses, they're supervisors, and so I now want to work for a millennial. I'm all in, because I want a participation paycheck. <laughs> Quit being so hard on the millennials. They got this figured out. It's coming back around. Thank you, parents, for giving them the participation trophy. So I'm working on my mental health, I go to the therapist, Walk in, the therapist says, David, uh, I think you're I think you're depressed. I said, took you five years of school to figure that out. I could have marked that on the box on the way in. <laughs> what do I do? She says, Well, you gotta start getting some rest and do something that brings you joy. I'm like, what? Get rest, bring me joy. You mean like take a nap and watch football? <laughs> Yeah, if that brings you joy. I should have got this depression thing a long time ago. 
My Sunday afternoons are canically prescribed. <laughs> Honey, I'm just down here treating my depression. God bless y'all. I'll, I'll see you Sunday. <laughs>